let me now introduce you to another young man, Fatan Bislimi, uh, who we met when he called me out of the blue. Uh, he was in the United States at the time. Uh, his family was one of the families, maybe a million people. Can you imagine Slobodan Milosevic, the new age Hitler? Thank God I was in Congress at the time he surfaced in 1987. He became the head of the Communist Party of Serbia, the head of the, the Serbian government, and I was then educated very quickly about who this Nazi-like character was. He was the New Age Hitler. What he did during those Balkan wars, starting with Slovenia, Croatia, Bosnia, and we knew, Shirley and I, that his biggest prize would be Kosovo, and there would be an immense genocide if we didn't step up our activities. And did we do that with key people? like Henry Hyde, like Joe Biden, Tom Lantos, Ben Gilman, you name it. We didn't go to average congressmen, we went to the chairman and we testified. You'll see this all, get Shirley's card, you'll see the website of the Albanian American Civic League and you'll see over 300 YouTube videos and look at the passion that Shirley and I had with the people we brought in to convince the Congress because they had no real knowledge of what was going on and the Serbs were getting away literally with murder and almost genocide. Thank God we caught them just in time, but 10,000 Albanians, approximately 10,000 in Kosovo were killed. But Fatan's family was part of that million people that Slobodan Milosevic drove out of Kosovo, they were in camps in Macedonia. He thought his family was dead. He ended up coming here and he was you know, bereft and somehow felt he had to do something for his people, calls me when he sees our website and introduces himself and says, you know, I'd like to do something for my people and I'm here at Texas Lutheran University. I've had sponsors, I'm doing very well. I mean, here's a, a gentleman who was taking uh, computers a computer science and math, straight A student, and ends up going to Harvard with a scholarship. We thought a full scholarship, didn't make it, but Shirley and I helped him, made sure that he got through Harvard. He has a master's degree from Harvard. He is now working on his PhD from Edmonton University in Alberta where his wife's family was, but he has decided not to make his life easy. He's decided to move back, and he is now in Jalan, Kosovo with his family, and it's very difficult for him to be there. We help him uh, financially so he could stay there because he is the future, along with Leka and others, educated young Albanians, to get rid of these corrupted regimes. We have to make sure they go back there, that they don't stay here where it could be easy for him. So with that, Fatan, uh, you volunteered to do so many things. He gave several conferences in Europe for the Albanians of Kosovo and Albania, uh, one in Prague, in 2003, one in Belgium, was out of 50 people, the only Albanian awarded first prize in both cases. He's uh, uh, an incredible young man that works very hard, and he came here to be with you today. Come, Fatah. Okay, good afternoon everyone and thank you all for being here today. I think this is a, a very important gathering in memory of those who have perished during the Holocaust, as well as in honor of those who at the uh, risk of their own lives have done whatever they could to save Jews during the uh, history's darkest days in Europe. So the story of the Albanian rescue of Jews is a story of the Albanian uh, people's own struggle for survival, for freedom, and for peace for centuries. It is a story of their commitment to their own values and virtues, the story of the Albanian tradition of generosity and righteousness, especially towards friends, guests, and those in need. So this story, I believe, resonates now more than ever before, especially in these turbulent times that we live today. And given the fact that the Yat Vashem has strict rules and how to recognize rescuers, which requires that a 
rescuer and a survivor are alive to confirm the details of the rescue. A lot of the Albanian families from Kosovo, Albania, and the rest of the Albanian lands in the Balkans will have not will not have the opportunity to be recognized. Not not that they did anything to be recognized, as was said previously, but but to honor that effort, to honor that commitment, uh, we have decided uh, to build a wall of honor, which is a project jointly done by the Al Albanian American Foundation under the leadership in, of, of Joe Ed Shirley, in close cooperation with the, Alba uh, with the Kosovo Israel Friendship Society under the leadership of Lekar Znici. And this wall eventually, uh, were, uh, the wall of honor that we're working on, will be built in Pristina, the capital city of Europe's youngest and newest, uh, newest country uh, called Kosovo. We're especially thankful for their uh, uh, support to Ron and Karen Rettner, uh, not only for this project, for, for, but for all they have done so far in making the story of the Albanian rescue of Jews known as widely as possible. However, the purpose of this wall uh, will be fourfold. This wall of honor will be the beacon and the bearer of this fourfold message uh, that includes tolerance, love, peace, and life. And we hope that the wall of honor that we want to build there will disperse this message across the globe to all peoples, all nations, regardless of their beliefs, regardless of their ethnicity, race, or faith. If America was woken up, educated, and inspired by the four freedoms of FDR during the World War II, I believe the wall of honor in Pristina, Kosovo, which will honor by name those Kosovar Albanian families that helped save Jews, will send this fourfold message of tolerance, love, peace, and life to the world. And there is a reason why I chose these four, four uh, messages. Well, I believe we can't love if we're not tolerant. We all are different, and we all are to look and find among ourselves what unites us as opposed to what divides us. And I think that's the basic notion of tolerance. But we can't ensure peace without love, as that would really be a mere lack of conflict. We can't have a fulfilled life if we don't have peace, as a life lived unfulfilled is one merely lived. Therefore, we envision this wall of honor as a beacon of, these, of this fourfold message in the heart of Europe, in the capital of Kosovo, and we will make sure that this memorial will be bold, sensitive, and as unique as the story of the Albanian rescue of Jews is. And lastly, I'm, thir I'm thrilled to announce that we have already gotten the full support from the mayor of Pristina for this project, who is willing to donate a prime piece of property in the capital city so that this wall of honor will be built.